my friends back out in the garden and we are going to do our best this year like never before trying to keep squash bugs off my zucchini pumpkins and that's it, my winter squash so I am going to share with you a couple new things I'm trying this year and we're going to see if it works Right now I'm just spreading DE around the base of them. It rained a couple days ago, so you have to reapply DE after the rain. Okay, so I learned, I'm getting DE dust all over me. I learned about this trick. I know I read it when I was still at my town home, um, the suburban homestead, and I've never done it. I don't know why. Probably because I'm a lazy gardener for the most part, but it is, um, you take strips of foil and my daughter's calling me. Hi. Hi. I love you. Nice shorts. Thanks, babe. She's fussing at me for wearing my shorts and the la her shorts in the last video. You're on YouTube. I oh, hi. <laughs> All right. Can I call you right back what so I can finish? Now? Squash bug prevention. Okay, talk to you later. Okay, bye. love you. Bye. Love you, bye. She's like, cause you know, sis, I grew up with all sisters and you fuss at each other and fuss at each other for wearing each other's clothes. We've always had that same relationship. We're about the same size. And she had to leave a lot of her clothes here when she went to the Navy. So I was like, oh, I bet Abigail's got some shorts. <laughs> so I went in her room and got some shorts. Okay, anyway, um, foil. That's what I was saying. Take strips of foil, like one inches or so, and let me see if I can get, get this even out of here. Okay. And then you um, dig down to about the roots of your plant and you wrap the stalk. And you keep wrapping it as your um, plant is growing and you're deleafing it and it supposedly will help prevent squash bugs from being able to bore in, or squash vine borers anyway, from being able to bore into your stems. And I lose, I tell you what, it's so frustrating because every year, just as my pumpkins are getting slightly mature, I end up losing the plants. And I've got to pull my pumpkins, Hope that they uh, ripen up at the house and get the vines out, burn them. This year, I hope to be able to do differently. So let me bring you guys down here and show you how I'm gonna wrap the stems. Okay, so my plant's not very big, but hopefully you can see there's just the first root right there. Oh, and there's already a little beetle I saw. The, what's getting them right now is um, cucumber beetles. And I don't know if they bore the same like a squash beetle would, but I'm just gonna pick these first leaves off. And we're gonna wrap that stem with this foil. Okay, and we'll bury it back up. And then what basically you do is you keep coming out and as the plant's growing and you're taking, if you prune your plants and you'll start taking these leaves off as it continues to grow and you keep wrapping the stem. So I'm probably just gonna keep a big um, sheet of tin foil out here in the garden. So it's available to me to do um, as I need it. But there's another tip too that I just learned when I was watching it back and researching it again exactly how to do it. And I bought, you can get these really cheap on Amazon, um, like a 10 pack of knee highs. And I didn't realize I bought black, but I don't think the color matters at all. But you do the exact same thing with knee highs. Um, the only thing is I don't know how to like keep the knee high 
tightly attached around the plant. So I did bring out my garden tape, um, Velcro tape, and I think I might just rip a piece of that off and do that. The nice thing is, is that since I'm doing two different methods, I'll be able to tell which one works better. So another person also told me for cabbages, they're, um, somebody that they knew wrapped a knee high around their cabbages and the cabbages are able to grow and expand in the knee high just fine and it keeps um, worms and nasty things off too. I don't know that I'm gonna try that, but I might. Um, we'll see, have to see how bad the situation gets. For now, I've got everything under control with my cabbages, but if it gets out of hand again, I might do that. So I have two zucchinis right here that are in my cabbage bed. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap one with foil and one with um, the pantyhose. And then we'll head over to where the pumpkins are growing and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do that process. With the pantyhose one, I just wrapped it around like two times. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the rest of this pulled out. And then as it grows, I'll be able to just continue wrapping. Does that make sense? We'll see if that works. So I'm back here at my trellising of my zucchini plants. And this was what I did just this last weekend. And I think it's finally, whoops, kind of tore that one. Finally big enough that I can clearly see how this main stalk is producing. So here's where I'll be um, holding it up. It keeps coming up the center stalk, putting off new side shoots. So what I'm gonna do is very similarly just break off these bottom stems, which are, somebody told me how to identify it. Um, the center stem is solid and the side shoots are hollow. So, example, that one's hollow. You guys can see in there. And when you break it off at the base, you're supposed to break it all the way to the solid stem. So you don't leave an entrance point for critters to get in. Okay, so I'm gonna dig around the base of this zucchini just to get to the first roots. And we're going to wrap it with foil. I'd be interested to know if any of you guys have tried this and found that it works at all. Um, one thing that they did say is you're gonna have to check like when you're using the foil especially because it doesn't stretch like the pantyhose wheel. Make sure that you're not girding your plant, you know, not causing um, it to get too tight. So I might have to come out here and adjust it periodically. But while we're here, let's do our first trellis of our zucchini. So we will continue as this grows, the center and the fruit set, I'll take off the bottom leaves and we'll end up with this big stalk and the top leaves are just where the next fruit is setting. So that's gonna be fun. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these zucchini while I'm back here. And we're gonna go ahead and do two with foil, maybe three with foil. No, two with foil and two with pantyhose. This is what cucumber beetles do, just in case you didn't know. They just eat up the leaves, from what I can tell so far. But what I'm, my main purpose today is to protect these here from the squash vine borers, which do way worse habit. They will kill a plant. Okay, so back here are my beautiful Cinderella pumpkins, and I really wanna have those work. I guess they make amazing, I've never successfully grown them. They make amazing pie pumpkins too. 
So then they are just beautiful plants so far. So I need to get my DE over here, sprinkle those really well. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use pantyhose on these. For some reason, as I'm doing it, I feel like this just gets snugger around the vine and it allows me to continually um, wrap the vine as well. And um, so what do you guys think? Do you think it's gonna work? I hope so. If there's another great, you know, lifetime proven tip that your great grandmas or your moms and dads did, leave it below because I would really like to try everything in my environment to see what works well. I always tell when you're working with DE, you turn all white. So I got everything with DE on it and around it, everything protected. So there was two pumpkins back near my um, kale bed that weren't quite big enough yet for me to wrap. So I'll make sure to come back and do those as they grow up. Uh, but yeah, I really hope this works. I have been still doing the soapy water spray on them. Um, I will tell you what I've noticed is I didn't do the soapy water spray for two days and the flea beetles popped. Not too, too bad, but I definitely noticed them from not doing it. So I'm gonna just continue to do that every single morning and then hand check and protect. So um, I'm bringing you guys along for this journey this year, doing a ton of pest management all organically in my garden. We don't use herbicides or pesticides here. And just, just to give you the experience and we'll see if I can get it under control. If I think about it when I'm editing this video, I'll throw in a clip last year of my Brussels sprouts and what they looked like by the end of the season. They were just decimated by the caterpillar um, and bugs and everything that ate them up. Like I said, every single year I use, lose my pumpkins before they're even fully mature. I typically will end up having um, squash bugs on my zucchini, but it's typically after I've had enough harvest that I don't care about it too much. So I typically just let the pest go at it, which probably isn't a good idea either. Um, so this year we're gonna just do our best best effort at managing our pest. So thanks guys for watching. Like I said, if you've got other ideas on what I should be doing to protect against those squash vine borers, let me know. Um, if it's things like neem oil and things like that, I know those things, but something unique like the pantyhose or the foil, because I've bought, and bought neem oil. To me, it's expensive. It's expensive and I'm looking for cost affordable solutions. Um, DE is not expensive. Like I said, the 10 pack of pantyhose, I think was like three bucks um, in foil. You know, you're lose, using little strips. So it doesn't cost a lot. Soapy water sprays free. So it, in benefit to me and to you, I'm trying to find affordable options. Um, so yeah, we'll talk to you guys later. And what's coming up next in the garden? I don't know, strawberries are coming in guys. They're not as good as I was hoping. We just did not have the spring grains that they need. So I will get a decent harvest, but they're not those big, beautiful strawberries like we got last season. That's okay. Talk to you guys later.